Okay, so let's have a look at this question that is all about resolving forces and it also links nicely into vector and scalar quantities. So first question, easy definition style question, the difference between vector and scalar quantities. So this is just a case of remembering them. Remember the vectors have magnitude and direction. Scalars just have magnitude, so there's no indication of direction with a scalar type thing. So that's nice and simple to start with. So an example of a vector quantity, I mean there's loads we could give. So we're looking at say like velocity, displacement. Oops, it's gone horribly wrong. Displacement. And obviously the scalar quantities of those would be speed and distance. Okay, that's not the one I'm supposed to handwriting, but I think those are nice and simple anyway. Okay, so let's move on to the, uh, the harder part of the question. Okay, so where we actually get into the business end of this question. So a 12 Newton force and an 8 Newton force act on a body of mass 6.5 kilograms at the same time. So calculate the maximum result and acceleration it could experience. And obviously the second part is the minimum. Okay, so let's draw a sketch for this. So we've got our mass, okay, like so, and we know it's 6.5. Okay, so to get the acceleration, we obviously need to try and apply the maximum possible force we can. So what we need to do is we need to apply a force in only one direction. So what we need to do is basically apply both of those forces in the same direction. So you'd have your 12.0, you've got your 8.0 which would give you 20.0 newtons of force in that direction, which would then give you an acceleration of, it doesn't ask for this, but I'll just go through there, of 20, okay, 6.5, which is 3.08, which is a second squared. Okay, so for the second one, it's a similar type thing, so let's draw a diagram for it again. So to get the minimum acceleration, we're going to want the minimum possible resultant force. So if we point our 12 zero newton force that way, to try and get the minimum resultant acceleration, we need them acting in opposite directions. So you'd have your 8.2 newtons that way. So your resultant force would be 12 minus 8 equals 4, mm, 4 newtons. So in this case, again, just for illustrative purposes, we're going to do, so your acceleration would be 4 divided by 6.5, which equals 0.62 so you can see there's quite a big difference between the acceleration you can get by applying the forces in each of those scenarios.